All right, today we're going to talk about the space race. The space race is one of the major results of the Cold War. Remember, the Cold War was between the Soviet Union and the United States, and it wasn't really a war of, like, fighting. It was more of a war of kind of propaganda, politics, and things like that. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched the world's first artificial satellite called Sputnik, and this shocked Americans. They didn't realize that the Soviet Union had taken such a technological lead. So it put a lot of pressure on America to kind of meet the same standard as the Soviet Union was already at. So in 1961, President John F. Kennedy, or JFK, set the goal of landing a human on the moon by 1970. So that's an important year. This was his goal year. 1970, we're going to land a person on the moon. Texas played an important part in meeting that goal. So the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, better known as NASA, directed all of the United States space exploration efforts. And this training facility opened in 1963 in Clear Lake. So that's near Houston. Um, if you've ever been to NASA before, it's really cool. You get to see how like astronauts train and it puts you through like simulations. The center employed thousands of people and contributed significantly to the growth of Houston. Obviously, when you invest in such a huge kind of like company type thing, you're going to bring a lot of people. And then you'll see later, a lot of these people ended up staying after they went into space. So in 1969, American astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first human to walk on the moon. So they achieved Kennedy's goal of landing a person on the moon in 1970. And that first person was Neil Armstrong. Texas contributed a number of personnel to the space program as well. Texas colleges and universities educated 46 astronauts, and by 2013, some 22 people born in Texas had served as astronauts. Many of them then came and settled in Texas after their missions were completed. So you can see how this is going to contribute to the growth of Houston as well. People are not only coming and training to go into space, but then after they finish their mission, they come back and they live here. Walter Cunningham is a scientist who piloted the first man, manned flight in the Apollo mission, and then he later became a successful business owner in Houston, and his company provides money to companies that develop new technologies. So again, you can see that cycle of they moved to Houston, they trained, they did their mission, they came back, and then they're giving back to the Houston area. So this would be a good time to probably pause the video and maybe write these things down, test your knowledge. But these are some of the things you're going to want to know based on what we just learned. So one of the major results of the Cold War was a competition to get to space first called what? John F. Kennedy's goal was to land a human on the moon by when? Texas played an important role in the space race by opening up a new NASA training center in what city? It's not Houston. In 1969, American astronaut, who, became the first human to walk on the moon? And then which scientist piloted the first manned flight in the Apollo mission? So go back and answer those questions before moving on. Now imagine you were living during this era. Should the United States invest in exploring space? And there were two different opinions that we're going to look at. The first one comes from President Lyndon B. Johnson. He was president during 1966 time. And all of the underlying things you see here are his reasons for why the space program was so great. So he was definitely pro-space. He said that it gave mankind its first close-up view of another planet. It brought, me it brought us measurably closer to the goal of instantaneous communication between all points on the globe. So you're talking be able, being able to communicate with each other and being million, like thousands of miles apart. So it's pretty important there. Speed and progress, speed, progress in medicine and weather prediction and in electronics, so science and technology stimulate our education, improve our material well-being, and broaden the horizons of knowledge. It's also a powerful force for peace. And then finally, he said, what we are discovering and building today 
will help solve many of the great problems which an increasingly complex and heavily populated world will face tomorrow. So he's saying that what we're finding in space now is going to help us in becoming a better community, a better society in the future. So again, all of these underlying things are his reasons for why the space race and exploring space is such a great thing. Then you have this other guy, Senator Walter F. Mundell, and he gave this speech to the U.S. Senate, and these are the things that he was saying why being in this space race was pretty much a waste of money, and that we could be spending this money on a lot better things. We could be spending these tens of billions more simply to realize the goal of the 1965 Education Act to achieve for every child true educational opportunity. He also talks about meeting housing needs, and then he later goes on to question the priorities of this country, saying the question is really one of priorities, whether the preservation of our water is really worth only about half as much as the next step in an unwork unworkable ABM, which is like a missile defense system, and then whether the control of air pollution is really worth less than the beginning of a space shuttle for our next space spectacular. So pretty much he's questioning, like, is having this missile that doesn't work more important than preserving water? And is creating this space shuttle more important than controlling air pollution? And then he goes on to compare this program of going to the moon to Medicaid, which is like healthcare. So he's kind of questioning, are we spending our money in the smartest way? And these are his reasons for why maybe we should be considering other things. And then here's the last part of what you need to do before you move on. Identify the point of view, discuss some of the reasons President Johnson provides in support of the space program. So I'd go back and really look at those underlying points. What does Senator Mundell think the government should spend money on? And then the last one is your opinion. Should the United States invest in exploring space? And then give examples to support your thinking. So before you move on from here, I'd go back and make sure I have these answers kind of prepared, at least in my mind. And then you'll go back to the module and click on the quiz, and that's where you'll submit your answers. Let me know if you need any help.